Maybe you didn't like Windows 11, are mad with Microsoft's approaches to gather more data about you, or you just want to try out something new and exciting. For whatever reason you want to try out Linux, the first step in your journey is to choose a Linux distribution. But how do you know what distribution is right for you? Are online articles trustworthy? Or are you missing out on awesome features that you wouldn't find in other distros? Where do you start? All of these questions and more in this video, where I'm going to show you how you can identify and choose a Linux distribution for your personal needs. Spoiler, it's actually way easier than you might think. So please make sure that you don't forget to click that like button and why not also subscribe to the channel. You don't want to miss out on any future videos, do you? Alright, let's start off with the whole process of identifying what you actually expect from your new Linux operating system. And trust me when I tell you this, there is no such thing as a gaming or work-oriented distribution that will magically boost your FPS. Yes, there are differences between distributions, but don't let that blind you. The way how you identify what you want is what you currently have. How do you use your computer? And why do you use it? Are you a gamer who plays multiplayer games? then definitely make sure to check if your games are supported on Linux at all. Are you someone who doesn't care about the operating system since you just watch Netflix, YouTube or just use it for buying stuff online? Think about what you actually do. What is your workflow for downloading something? How do you create files? Think of the little things like that. These small details should be taken into consideration because on Linux there is not one way to do it. We have many different desktop environments and shells. You want to think about these things so that you don't get a false image of Linux if something doesn't work like you used to. Linux is not Windows or Mac OS. And even desktop environments that look similar do not necessarily behave the same. They are not an alternative to Windows, they are what Mac OS is to Windows. Something completely different. And that's why I don't really like it when people suggest KD Plasma for new users if they're coming from Windows. Just know, use Plasma if you like it, not because it resembles Windows. Anyway, why am I even talking about this? Well that's because the first thing that you want to do is to look up desktop environments and pick out a few that you really like. This approach is very well suited if you want to replace your workstation and are not looking for very specific needs like a, a file server, but then you wouldn't need a desktop environment at all. But yeah. Some distributions use generic or slightly altered desktop environments, mainly based on GNOME, Plasma, Cinnamon, XFCE and many more. But there are also many other custom ones. Pick one that you really like and go for it. The next step would be to find out what distribution offers your desktop environment. Like, I know, theoretically all of them, but I mean by default. What we want is no effort at first, so let's find a distro which flavors contain our desktop environment. The approach to finding the right distribution here is very simple, because you ask yourself again, how do you use your PC? Who are you? Are you interested in computer science? Then you can choose base distributions like Arch, Debian or SUSE. Are you someone who just wants a working system without the hassle of going through detailed installers? Then go to distros that advertise themselves. Just enter your chosen desktop environment and search for which distros have it by default. You can often even use the image straight away. For now, don't worry about gaming distributions or other optimizations. They are minor and if you really need them, let's say for a 10 year old PC, then you can always go ahead and install them later. But most of the time they won't give you the desired effect. The only things that I would recommend you to look out for are secure boot and hardware compatibility, especially for Nvidia GPUs. Why secure boot? Many don't really care for it, but in terms of security, it is actually kind of nice to have, if you use it properly. Secure Boot is designed to only load up files at boot that are signed by either the operating system or yourself. This is nice, because if you were to install a virus that loads up with booting your PC, then it can't. So Secure Boot adds another layer of security. 
That is, if you don't automatically sign everything you install. It's mostly minor though, and Microsoft kind of tries to push this new Windows only secure boot, but it does work. Now, remember when I said that you should think about on how you use your PC? Let's move on to that. There are two terms of Linux operating systems that get thrown around out there. Stable distributions and unstable distributions. Stable distributions have typically older packages, drivers and often support more older hardware as well. Packages are tested heavily in order to verify that ideally no system crashes or errors happen at all. Unstable distributions are the exact opposite. They release packages sooner, often don't really test them themselves, but are also way more compatible with very recent hardware. I don't really like the terms stable and unstable because it kind of gives a false perception of what unstable actually means. So what does it actually mean? What is the baseline for this measurement? Is an unstable Linux distribution more likely to crash? Well yes, but only potentially. Is an unstable distribution more likely to crash than Windows? Uh, well, no actually. See, the thing is, what is unstable? You can think of it as some sort of verification. Stable is verified to not cause any issues, while unstable could have the same or even better experience, but just doesn't have the verification. So it does not really matter, and especially if you're looking into a workstation and not a server. That being said, choosing a Linux distribution is as easy as just saying Oh, cool desktop environment, has some nice features, and I like it. Oh, cool, these distributions offer it out of the box, and also support secure boot and an easy driver installation. And that's it, literally. Now, I'm not saying that everything will already work out for you. You will gain experience and maybe even swap out the desktop environment or the distribution as a whole. But now, you know what you didn't like. And I guarantee you that you once had problems with Windows that really annoyed you, but you just most likely forgot or just got used to it. It's basically the same when everyone thinks that school was so great and everything. Uh, no, it was not. They just forgot how hard it actually was, but just remember the breaks, socializing and playing games afterwards. The point is, on Linux you have all the control. And if something bothers you, then you are way more flexible to change it. And that's pretty cool. So if you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and why not even subscribe to the channel? Make also sure to watch this video next. You won't regret it. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.